This .NET MAUI crash course is almost coming to a close, but not before we've learned how to implement styling, theming, and more specifically, how to implement light theme and dark theme support in our Monkey Finder application. Just a quick check, this video is part of a full course, which makes the most sense if you follow it from front to back. So if you didn't come here through the rest of the course, then make sure to check out the playlist that's popping up on your screen right now. For this video, we're going to learn all about theming and styling. Actually, I'm not going to spend too much time going over the theory here, at least not on camera, uh, because I think it will work the best if I just walk you and talk you through the code that is in our Monkey Finder application. So let's just switch over to Visual Studio and see what it's all about. Now, to follow along with this part of the course, make sure that you clone the repository, the link you can find down below in the video description, um, clone it to your local disk, and here we have part six, app themes, that is the start for our um, episode that we are watching right now of this course there's a solution and whenever you open that in visual studio you will get the monkey finder solution uh, the monkey finder application project that we left off for the previous video um, but i actually started a uh, file new project um, because i wanted to show you another thing if you do file new dotnet maui application um, you will get a template like this with you know go to the solution explorer um, just a app an app shell main page all kind of the basic ingredients but under the reason Sources, there's also the styles.xaml. So I mentioned before, like, you know, if you are going to start working with cross-platform development, then there is enough to learn already. So what we are trying to do is make that threshold as low as possible for you to start. And the styles.xaml is also uh, be there because of that, basically, because we've styled everything in your application um, so that you can, A, uh, you do not have to go out to the documentation and see how to do all the styling things. You already have an example here. And B, um, if you are happy with this styling because you know we're doing a lot of the stuff that you probably also want to do you can just tweak the colors right here um, and you will just style a your application like that if you're just getting started so um, it's just good to know that this is here um, and I'm now going to go over to the monkey finder and explain everything there so let's just close this one basically and give you a quick tour so I, I already had the code running here um, I got the monkeys we implemented like this pull to refresh in the previous video right um, so that it gets the new monkeys uh, whenever we get in here then you can see the details all the things we are pretty far with our application here so um, for Android and for Windows and for iOS we have dark theme or dark mode as it's called in some operating systems so if I slide down here and uh, slide this menu out then you can see the dark theme toggle here and whenever I push that then um, Android is going to switch to dark mode so it all looks dark and, and, and handsome now um, but our application is still, uh, it's, it's burning my eyes. It's still light mode, right? So um, we need to fix that. So let me put this back actually to the light mode right here so that we can see uh, and be amazed at the results and be shocked that it actually worked. Um, so let's go over to our code. This is our application right now. Let's go over to our code. I'm actually going to stop running it here for a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do is go to our solution explorer. And here we have in our app.xaml. So um, I think this application might have been started when the styles.xaml was not in the templates yet. So that's why it's here. But uh, this also kind of like indicates that you can put it in different um, places in your application, right? So we have this resource dictionary. Um, and in this case, it lives inside of your application and the application.resources. But you could also go to your main page.xaml and we could do here um, content page. Whoops, I need to add the angle bracket to it, content page dot resources. We have that here as well. I could do a resource dictionary here as well, and it would be specific to this page. So it kind of like cascades throughout um, different layers of your application. Um, but for here, for the app one, um, it will be available inside of your whole application. Now you can see Visual Studio helps us with the nice colors here that it's uh, kind of like previews for us. So that's nice. And inside of a resource dictionary, you can have these colors. I think you can also have a thickness that you can use for like uh, border, uh, thickness and that kind of stuff um, but you know colors will probably be the majority so you can have these colors and those just specify with the key um, this color you can also do like the name colors you can see that here just black also works um, and you can give it a key so a name which you can reference it by later 
So for instance, if we look here, the light background, um, you can see that this light background is referenced here by this style. Um, so before I go into the styles, let's look at what's happening here with this static resource light background. So you have static resources, you have dynamic resources, and you have the app theme binding, which is technically another thing altogether, but we'll get to that. Um, so the static resource, you just set that, and um, this property, the background property, will stop listening for any changes. This you should use whenever you know that your theme is not going to change. This is just the theme that you're doing in design time, and that's going to be it. If you want to have some theming engine inside of your application where you're going to switch themes um, by the user maybe, or by whatever, um, then you want to set this to a dynamic resource. And a dynamic resource um, will keep listening for changes to this light background key. So whenever something changes there, whenever you change the value for the light background, or you load a new resource dictionary, that's totally things that you can do. I'm not going to show you. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you want to see. Um, but then it will update at runtime and it will have that light background. Now for light theme and dark theme, we have easier things to do that. So you don't need to uh, manually load whole new resource dictionaries and whatnot, but we'll get to that in a second. So you have the static and dynamic resources. You've learned about that now. Let's look into these styles right here. Let's scroll up a little bit. So we have this style and with the style, you can give it a target type. So this style goes to the target type page. So this style will be applied to a page, right? And there's also this interesting attribute right here, apply to derived types. So by default, this is set to false. So it will only be applied to a page and a page is, you know, kind of like the highest um, page where all the other pages are inheriting from. Um, so it's very unlikely that you're using just a page Page. Um, so you want to apply it to derived type so that it also works for a content page, a tabbed page, a navigation page. Um, that is what this attribute does. So whenever you want to style your entry um, and you have kind of like an inheritance of that entry, then make sure to set this to true so that it will trickle down through all those elements and it will be applied to that as well. Now inside of this style, we have this setter. And in this case, we are setting the property. So you're gonna have to specify the property here, background color and the value. Now, I just showed you this with like the static resource. You can of course do this also with like, you can put white in here directly if that's what you want. Um, as long as you have a value that is applicable to the type of the property here. Um, but of course, you know, what makes this real powerful is do if you reference this to the key and you just have to change this one color here and it will all fall into place and you will have that color subject everywhere. Um, so again, here the property, it sees that we have this, this target type here of page. So um, the IntelliSense will help us here with all the properties that are here for a page. Um, and of course, you know, you can add multiple setters here. So if we just duplicate this line and we now set, um, I don't know, some other property here, some random one uh, is visible, um, then we have to set the value obviously to true or something like that. Um, but you can set all the uh, setters, all the properties for the thing that you're trying to style here. Now, if we scroll a little bit down, um, you can actually see another nice concept where we have a style also applied to derive types um, and a target type of navigation page. So this is actually a level deeper than the page that we've just seen. And we can just override the background color. So you can make it more specific to other types of pages. Um, you can make that background color, you know, specific to that navigation page and actually add even more properties to it because the navigation page will now have more specific properties to the navigation page. So that's how you can like nest all these things. Um, there is an other way to do that, uh, which I'm going to show you right now. So let's scroll down a little bit here again. And here we have this um, style target type label. So here we're going to do labels. And here we suddenly have this X key base label. Now, whenever you leave out the X key, um, it's going to be an implicit style. So this is going to be applied to a navigation page, no matter what, or a page, no matter what. Um, but if you specify this key, it's going to be an explicit style. And then you have to go out to a label and actually say like, hey, um, you need to have the base label style, else it's going to be not applied to um, any label. So if we scroll down here a little bit and we see this, this happens for the rest of the styles here as well. Um, so if we take like, I think the X uh, key medium label, I think if we then go to the details page.xaml, which I have open right here and we scroll down, um, you can see these labels will have a style uh, attribute and that will reference to the static resource medium label or micro label. So 
if we don't apply this style, then um, it will not work. It will not be applied unless we leave out the X key and then it's suddenly applied to all of our labels. So you can definitely play with that, how to configure with that. Um, but what this also opens up this scenario where you say the X key, um, you can say uh, with the next style with an X key, you can say based on uh, because now because it's an explicit style, right? So we need to say based on static resource base label. So now it will get these properties, the font family, the text color, it will have all those properties and and we can add to that with our own font size. And that's the only thing that's kind of different between the different styles that you can see here, right? Um, and I think that is kind of like everything that you um, need to know about the styles right now. Implicit styles, explicit styles, um, dynamic resources, um, static resources. Um, so now it's time, actually I need to scroll back up for this, I skipped over that, uh, for the app theme binding. And that's an important one for the light theme and the dark theme. Um, as you can already see here, so this kind of looks familiar, right? If we do the data binding, we would not do app theme binding, we would just do regular binding. And what we've already seen also is like the string format, right? So the binding is just another C sharp object. It's just a, um, a little extension here for our XAML stuff. Um, and just like the string format, we can also specify the light and the dark here. And that's what's happening. So we have this app theme binding, which inherits from binding, which is very specific to loading these styles. And we have a property for light and for dark. And I think we even have a fallback value, which is kind of like the default. Um, and here we can just specify, hey, whenever the light theme is on for the operating system that we're running on, we want to have this static resource of light background. And whenever we we have the dark theme, which is the property here, we want to have the static resource of dark background. So um, it will automatically apply that it can be static resources doesn't even matter. Um, it will just load that automatically for you. Um, so that is what the app theme binding does. And whenever you want to support light theme and dark theme, that is exactly the thing that you want to use. Now, everything that you're seeing here with these setters, you can apply to this background color directly as well, we will see that in a little bit. Um, so you can just put whatever is in the value here also on the uh, navigation page dot uh, background color basically you can put that value in there as well so with that um, i think it's time to actually start implementing that light theme and dark theme support now to do that i'm going to add a couple of extra colors here so i'm going to copy them from uh, the repository that we've just seen and paste them in here. Now, this is just, you know, it's, it can be kind of confusing. Of course, the keys can be whatever you want, but I always find this a little bit confusing, like label text dark, and then it's going to be white. Um, but this is going to be the value for whenever uh, it's set to dark, right? So then it has to be white, else you can't read it. Does that make sense? But again, this can be anything you want. So give it a descriptive name that will uh, make sense to you. Um, so now we can make the updates to the background color. And that's actually pretty nice because we have kind of like these base styles right here. Um, and we can just change this um, value right here um, from the static resource into a app theme binding. So let's take this page value right here and I'm going to paste in the app theme binding and now you can see it does for the light um, um, variant it does the static resource light background which we already had here and the dark the dark background so it's just going to be a shade of white and a black background um, and this will automatically now work for all the pages because we're doing target type page and it applies to derived type so it does it for all the pages it trickles down and that is what makes this styling engine so very powerful so that's cool we got that one um, what's next so we're going to go to our base label again this is our base label so this um, will help for everything we're going to do this text color boom paste that in here app theme binding static resource label text and label text dark uh, the background on our refresh view so we need to um, do this because the refresh view you know although it seems kind of like invisible um, it might still seem uh, give a white background whenever we um, um, scroll it down and it, a little bit of white will come after that so better just set the background color on that um, scroll all the way down target type refresh view i'm going to add a new key for that nothing new here just a setter Probably property for the background and we're going to set this um, static resource light background dark background so that it's in line with the, the rest that we've seen um, for the button outline so um, I already mentioned it in a couple of videos like hey we already styled a little bit for this uh, the button outline is one of those uh, which is like the the buttons with the outline <laughs> uh, that you see at the bottom of the main screen um, and we can um, do that as well with the background because else it will have a light background as you can see here which is not what we want of course so we're 
we're going to set the background for that and the card view which is you know the the cards that we see in the collection view for all the monkeys in our main um, list so we have a oh i don't think we have the background oh here's the background color light background so let's paste in the app theme binding here as well and i think we've done most of the things here um but in the repository right now is mentioned um, um that you know this was created while dotnet maui was in development so i'm not entirely sure if this is still needed a nice exercise for you at home uh, but it does shows nicely how to actually uh, specify the same app theme binding in an attribute directly on any object um, so let's go over to the main page .xaml, and here we're uh, specifying also directly on the grid um, this background color as well so you can see um, here this background color um, is you can just set it to background is app theme binding and boom that should work as well same thing for the details page on our scroll view so let's scroll up here scroll view we need to do this so like I said I'm not sure if this is entirely needed um, but just to make sure that my demo works um, and also to show you how to do this directly on an element if that is something that you would want now if we run this application we go to run this on um, Android but the same thing works again for Windows uh, for Mac OS for iOS um, and we can see now whenever we flip that uh, dark theme toggle then our whole application should suddenly look nicely and will be you know for our dark theme fans okay our application is coming up here so let's see let's see all right our application looks as it did before let's get those monkeys Yes, this still looks good, okay. But now, whenever we are going to toggle that dark theme thing, here we go, then our OS changes, and you can already see in the background, our application changes as well. Everything looks nice and dark. We have the, um, the white um, text here. We can go to the details. You can also see the white text. So now our application is ready for dark theme support, and also our dark theme fans are happy with our new monkey finder, basically. This is definitely one of those things that you need to start working with in order for it to make sense. Um, just, you know, see how it works with the inheritance, try out a little thing here and there, um, tweak some of the colors of the themes and, and see how it all behaves and, and works. Um, but this is very powerful, very flexible. And if you, um, you know, if you get the hang of this, um, it will be pretty amazing. And I actually didn't even mention this, but if you, uh, you can also set those resource dictionaries, you can have them on the application level, you can have them on the page level, but you can also make it separate files. That's exactly what the styles.xaml is that I showed you in the beginning. Um, you can just have that in a separate file. You can link it inside of your application and um, you can just use it that way and then you can swap out the whole resource dictionary while your application is running um, and you can have kind of like a theming inside of your application if that is something that you want now this video has been the last one so actually uh, i'm not going to congratulate you yet um, there is going to be a, a video after this one where i'm going to tell you a little bit about um, some resources where you can go to uh, make your app really awesome and amazing uh, because there's a wonderful community Community out there um, that will help you make the best app you can um, and some other tips and pointers maybe and there is a very special surprise there a gift especially for you to prove that you have built your very first .NET MAUI application so make sure to check that out and don't miss it I'll see you for the next one actually uh, here is the link to that video right now this is the playlist and this is the button that you should definitely click to subscribe to my channel see you for the last video